Feel the top hand rise. And the hand on the belly rise. And feel both hands fall as you exhale. The next time you inhale, push the hand on the belly away a little bit further. And then the hand on the chest. Feeling that full body expansion. Three more full breaths just like that. Feel the back press into the mat. Feel the shoulders melt into the earth. And go ahead and switch. Whichever hand was on the belly, put it on the heart. And whichever hand was on the heart, put it on the belly. Continue breathing just like that. Inhale, exhale, listening to the sound of your heartbeat. Letting the air as it travels into your body be so soft that you can't hear it even in the quietest of rooms. Though the breath is soft, it is still powerful. Continuing to breathe. Bring your awareness to the crown of your head, the very top of your head. Breathe into the very top of your crown, the area of your scalp. If you have hair, imagine it would be where your ponytail would sit if you had a very high ponytail. Imagine breathing into that space and the air drips down from the crown, past the throat, through the heart, through the core, past the pelvis and down into the thighs, past the kneecaps, swirling around, down the calves and the shins, circling the ankle, through the heels and the soles of the feet and the tippy, tippy tip of your toes. I'm gonna join you guys down here on the mat. Go ahead and remove both palms down to the mat by your thighs, placing palms face down. Go ahead and press that lower back into the mat. Inhale, bend the knees, soles of the feet come to the mat. We'll find our climb figure four, bringing that outer right ankle onto our left thigh. Inhale that left foot off the earth as we uh, prepare for our recline figure four, keeping both feet flexed to protect that knee. Clasp the fingertips behind the left thigh and pull that left knee in toward your face. You wanna get a little bit, bit deeper in, push that right thigh out with that right elbow. Every inhale, pull that left knee into the heart. Every exhale, push that right thigh away from the heart. We'll be here for four full breaths as we press the lower back into the mat. This is really good for opening up the hips and releasing the lower back. Encourage those shoulders down to the earth, still breathing, let your breath be soft and remain powerful. One more breath here. keeping that right ankle and the left thigh, slowly lower the left foot down. Go ahead and cross that right leg over the left like you were sitting uh, in a dress or in a skirt. Slowly drop your arms down to a cactus, look over your right shoulder and release both legs over to the left side of the mat for a nice supine twist. Exhaling into it, you might feel some snap, crackle and pop and that's amazing. Opening up that lumbar spine. Close the eyes and just feel the breath. Send it all the way down to that tailbone, massaging that lower back. Maybe even opening up those glutes a little bit. Two more breaths, just like that. Begin to bring the awareness to the pinky toe on your left foot, press it into the mat and let the rest of the foot follow to bring 
both feet back up slowly bring both feet to the earth and we're gonna windshield wipe it out knees fall to the left then to the right try to keep the lower back on the earth you don't have to keep it like crazy glued to the earth but just encourage it down slowly windshield wipe two more breaths you may feel this on the outer thighs and the glutes also in the lower back and the hips as well inhale knees back through center left outer ankle onto right thigh inhale it up clasp the fingers behind that thigh making sure that that ankle is not on the knee but right above the knee on the actual thigh four full breaths inhale knee comes in exhale opposite knee goes out both feet are flexed. Listening to the beating of the heart and the sound of the breath. Feel the expansion being created with the breath. Release the fingers. Lower the foot down to the earth, cactus the arms, look over the right shoulder, cross the legs. Next exhale, legs drop to the right. Option to just rub that outer thigh a little bit. It'll get you a little bit deeper into the twist, but also it's just nice to rub your thigh. Why not? Maybe apply some pressure to wherever you may be feeling any sensations or any soreness if that applies to you today. Using your breath to find your calm and your center. One more breath. Inhale the knees back through center. Both feet back to the earth. Heel toe, the pinky toe sides, both feet to the left and right side of the mat to drop your knees in together. You can even opt to bring the big toes on the, right on the outside of the mat and then drop the knees in together. The hands can be one hand on, on heart and uh, belly or cactus them out, yogi's choice. A nice restorative rest for the lower back, a little counter motion for the hips. Continuing to breathe. Let's take the next few breaths to set an intention for practice. Keeping in mind that we just had a full moon, a super moon over this, this weekend and the moon is now in Libra and has a lot to do with um, stepping into newness and relationships and closing doors and, uh, you know, transitions in relationships, which I find um, interesting seeing that we are kind of on the brink of the weather changing and there's this very transformational energy happening right now. Um, so let that inform your practice if it applies to you or resonates with you at all. Really allowing yourself to come from a grounded place every time you're on the mat, but especially today. As we switch seasons, things are in bloom, as are we, remembering that we are just as much a part of nature as every tree, every grain of grass, every flower petal. Let's take one full inhale, filling up the body. This is the biggest inhale we've taken all day. Hold it at the top, sip in just a little bit more air and exhale it out through the mouth with the sigh. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, fill it up to the top, sip a little bit more air, exhale it out through the mouth with the sigh. Slowly heel toe the feet back in, hug the knees into the chest, right to the left, right to the right, maybe even create a circle. You're going to go for circular motion. You already know what I'm going to say. For balance, you have to go in both directions. Hugging those knees in tight, 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 tight. Hug the chin to the chest. One full breath here. Exhale, blow it out into the knees. Two more just like that. Inhale, exhale, blow it out into the knees. Once more. 
release that right leg out, apanasana. Hug that left knee into the chest, rotate that left ankle. Going in both directions, relaxing the shoulders to the earth. Our arm muscles are working. We don't need our shoulders to get those activated, to hug those or, or hug that knee into our chest. Inhale that right leg up, exhale, left leg back down. Rotate the ankle. Going at your own pace. Continuing to breathe life into that intention. Let it guide you through your practice. Bring both knees back to your heart, dropping the chin to the chest. Rock forward, rock backward until you gain enough momentum to roll up to your Sukhasana. You can be facing the short edge of your mat, like I am. Just checking the chat, making sure you guys are all good. It looks like you are all good. Great. Placing the palms on the knees, we're gonna take a few seated cat cows, inhaling arch in the back, looking up to the sky for cow. Exhale, round out through the spine and the shoulders, cat. Going at the pace of your own breath. Inhale, cow, exhale, cat. Really exaggerate in the spine. If you really find a nice rounding in the shoulders, you'll get a nice stretch between the scapula here and the upper back. A few full breaths. Two more rounds. And we'll meet back in center in our Sukhasana. Inhale the arms up to frame the ears. Exhale, relax the shoulders. Inhale, create length through the side body. Exhale, push the air down. Palms meet at the top of the mat, forward fold. To get a little bit more length, we might want to curl the fingertips up. But in curling the fingertips up, make sure you keep your shoulders plugged down and back. We want to get that stretch, but that doesn't mean we hyper extend through the shoulders. So we don't want to be here, we want to be here. Nice. Watch your next inhale, create length through the side body and the back of the body. Next exhale, melt a little further down into the earth. Imagine somebody's pulling you from a string that's attached to your sternum down to the mat. So we're leading with the sternum, not from rounding in the back. Slowly begin to walk the fingertips back. Come to sit up in your Sukhasana. Swing the feet over to the left or to the right for your tabletop. Extend that right leg out and back. Rock forward, rock backwards. Open up the back of the leg to open up the sole of that foot. Maybe create a circular motion. And return that right knee back under the body. Same with the left. Rock forward, rock back for a circular motion. Left knee back under the body. Inhale the right arm up to the sky. Thread it under the shoulder. Right ear to the mat. Slowly walk the left fingertips to the top of the mat, coming onto the fingertips to create kind of like a dome in the palm. Really encourage that left armpit down to the mat and square it off a little bit more for a nice stretch. That right palm just kind of hangs out on the floor there. Reground that left palm back under the left shoulder, pressing into the floor. Let's come back through tabletop. Inhale, left arm. Exhale, thread it under. Left ear comes to mat. Curl the right fingertips forward, squaring that right armpit off to the earth. To do that, you might have to even lift up your head a little bit, square it off, and then place it back down, and that's okay. Slowly drag those fingertips back under the right shoulder. Take a few cat cows and do whatever your body feels like it needs. It may be a wag of the tail. 
Shake the head, yeah, shake the head. No, rotate the head even in a 360 motion. Just make sure you go in both directions. You'll have a few breaths to kind of just play with your body and explore based on what you feel today. Moving at the pace of your own breath, whatever movements you are taking right now, just know there is no rush. Go at your own pace. Three more full breaths to explore and just play around on the mat today. Bring the big toes together and open the knees up the width of the mat. And we're gonna slowly release the tailbone to the heel on an exhale. And on an inhale, we're gonna come back up through tabletop. That was a little trick. I bet you thought we were going into child's pose. Not yet. <laughs> We'll meet with the, uh, the hips away from the heels. Next time we're gonna go into a circular motion, bringing the hips to the right, lowering them down to the heels, to the left and back up. If this is a bit much on your knees, feel free to roll the mat up just a bit where your knees are resting so that you have some extra cushion. Breathe into those snap, crackle, pops if you hear any, because I know I do. <laughs> we'll go in the opposite direction. One more round and we'll shoot the hips back to the heels. Open the knees up by like a half an inch more if it's available for you today in your practice. If you wanna keep your mat rolled up, feel free to do that. And slowly walk the palms out toward the top edge of the mat for your child's pose. Elbows lifted away from the floor. Really feel that nice stretch on the inner thighs. Breathe deeply into that lower belly. Feel the ribs slowly and gently separate. Feel the sides of the body get bigger. Really feel the body be filled up. Feel the subtle difference of when your body is filled up with air, with prana. And when you slowly release it, Well, we release the elbows and the forearms down to the mat, pressing into the forearms and the palms. Lift the hips up, bring your knees back to parallel, tuck the toes, drop the head right between the elbows, and press into the balls of the feet to shoot the hips up and back for your dolphin pose, encouraging those heels down to the mat. Your head should be really heavy looking down and back right between the feet. Really press, press, press into those elbows, into those forearms, palms, knuckles, and fingertips. Go ahead and walk it out here if you can. And then find stillness. Really encourage that tailbone up to the ceiling. Roll the shoulders down and away from the ears. One full breath. And slowly lower the knees down to the mat. Walk your palms to the very top of your mat till their arms are nice and straight. 
and then slowly melt the chest and the forehead down to the mat for our puppy pose. Elbows are raised off the mat, three full breaths. If you're noticing that you have a bit of an arch here in the lower back, go ahead and just bring the navel into your spine, tuck the tailbone down and forward, and you'll feel that greater stretch in the upper back and in the shoulders, also in the heart space. With those adjustments, we'll give, we'll take two more breaths. Slowly glide the right palm back under the right shoulder, then the left. Press up through tabletop, tuck the toes, and shoot your hips up and back for your first downward dog. Checking your form by inhaling to plank, or exhaling to plank rather, and shooting it back up to downward dog. Walk your dog, shake your head yes, shake your head no. The head is still looking down and back at the heels. Get that nice stretch in the back of the body by encouraging those heels down. Go ahead and press the balls of the feet into the mat, lift the toes, and then slowly place them down on the mat one by one. So you know you're getting that real nice engagement. Two more breaths just like this. Remember your intention, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth with a sigh if you need to. Inhale up to your tippy toes, exhale, bend the knees, chest goes back. We'll do that one more time. Inhale up to tippy toes, exhale, bend the knees, chest goes back toward the thigh. Inhale up to your tippy toes, walk the feet to the hands, we'll meet in a forward fold. Option to grab opposite elbows or ragdoll it out. Slowly swaying away from the left to the right. Being really heavy in the head. The head, on average, weighs about 10 pounds. So it's about 10 pounds of weight you don't need to carry for the next few breaths. Really keep that nice soft bend in the knees and be heavy in the torso. You may feel the need to kind of hold yourself up a little bit. Just let it all hang out. Even if that means the thighs and the chest are kind of meeting. Find stillness. Inhale through the nose, blow between the knees. Two more breaths, just like that. Inhale through the nose, exhale, blow it out the mouth between the knees. Press into the feet and slowly roll it on up. Inhale, roll the shoulders up and back. Activating those legs, rooting down through the soles of the feet. Activating the glutes, navel to spine, tailbone tucked down and under. You can go in opposite directions with your shoulder. Palms open to the front of the mat. Drop the right ear to the right shoulder. If you want to get a little deeper into this, option to bring the right arm. Rest it on that left ear. Just an option, or you can just hang out here. Yogi's choice. Option to wiggle the fingertips or even rotate the wrist here. Inhale the head up through center. Exhale, left ear to left shoulder. Option to bring left wrist to right ear, or just hang out here. Going in the opposite direction with the finger wiggles and the wrist circles. Inhale the head back through center. Inhale the arms out to the side and up overhead. Palms together. Exhale, palm to heart center, Anjali Mudra. Keeping the eyes open here. Really feel powerful through the legs and really feel your whole entire body active here. Palms pressing into each other. Elbows taking up space from the left to the right side really grounding down. Imagine that you are a big, strong tree with roots that are your feet pressing into the soil that is your mat. Take a look down at your toes. Really place them down one by one on the mat. And imagine that there's a suction in the, in the arches of your feet or the soles of your feet. So you're pulling up through the soles of the feet so that the toes, the heels, and the balls of the feet are really active. Keeping that same activation, come up. Imagine pulling your knees up in your mind's eye and sucking them back so that we can get that external rotation 
of all the quad muscles here. And that'll make it easier for you to really activate those glutes and keep them nice and strong. Bringing the navel to the spine, shoulders hugged into their pocket. If a swift wind came to blow, we would not move a little bit, even if we were a tree with leaves. This is the activation that we want to have in Tadasana. I realize that my head is kind of cut off, so I'm going to adjust the camera really quick. Here in our Tadasana, in our Anjali Mudra, take a glance in front of you. Find a point of focus, a non-moving point of focus. That's going to be our drishti. Whatever that is, it can be even just a dot on the wall. That is gonna be our non-moving point of focus that will help us with our balancing asana throughout practice today. You can use that spot and imbue it with whatever you need it to be. It can be your intention, it can be a goal, uh, it can be anything that you need it to be. See that thing in your drishti. Take a nice deep breath, keeping the eyes open. Exhale, breathe out through the mouth. The next time we inhale, we're gonna exhale out through the mouth and send the air to that drishti, imagining sending all of your energy through, right to that spot so that you can truly connect with it. And we'll do it once more. Inhale, palms up to the ceiling. Exhale, swan dive forward, pushing the air down and away for a fold. Inhale up halfway, flat back, soft bend in the knees, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale it up, Ardha Uttanasana, flat back once more. Hold it, shoulders away from the ears, chin is tucked, shooting out through the crown and the tail at the same time. Exhale, fold forward, bend the knees, plant the palm. Step your left foot back, then your right foot. Slowly lower the knees down. Untuck the toes. And we're going to lower the chin and the chest to the mat. Drop the chin on the mat. And we'll rest here for two full breaths, opening up that throat chakra. Slowly melt the chest down and forward. Come up to your low cobra. Elbows pull back. Exhale it down, tuck the toes. We'll meet in downward dog. Pedal it out. Inhale that right leg up and back. Open that hip up. Really imagine you were gonna step down and back on the left side of the mat with that right foot to really open up the front side of that body. One more full breath. Exhale, close it up, keeping the bend in that knee. Exhale, shoot that knee forward toward the nose. And we're going to drop the outer right shin onto the mat in a 90 degree angle. Slowly lower that left leg to the floor. Really using the palms to get us nice and tall in the torso for our pigeon pose. Making sure we're not sinking down here through that left or that right hip, rather. We want to stay squared off to the earth keeping that left foot really flexed. And slowly walk the palms forward, coming down to your forearm. We'll be here for five full breaths in our pigeon pose. Keeping that foot flexed so we protect the knee. Really relax into this pose. Also an option to make a pillow with the palms and drop the forehead. Slowly begin to come back to the palms. Tuck that left toe, lift the knee off the earth. Squeeze the glutes, navel to spine, push it back up to your three-legged dog. Right toes hit the earth, we'll take it on the left side. Inhale, left leg up and back, open the hip up as if you were gonna step down onto the right side of the floor. Bring that knee into the heart, drop the outer left shin onto the mat. Get nice and tall through the torso. Bring that right knee to the earth and slowly lower the torso down. Either onto your forearms or lay the forehead on the palms that are a pillow.
not sinking down to that left hip, keeping the hips squared off. This can be a, an intense hip opener, so really use your breath. Slowly begin to come back to your palms, tuck the right toe, lift that right knee off the mat. Do what you need to do to feel stable to get yourself back to that three-legged dog. And downward dog. Bounce a little bit on the heels. Relax those shoulders, chest goes back toward the knees and thighs. Two full breaths here. Just find a home here. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth if you need to. Also an option to flutter the lips if you ever feel tension or discomfort sneaking in. Inhale through the nose, exhale out. Flutter of the lips. Inhale up to the tippy toes and slowly walk the feet to the hands. Inhale up halfway, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, roll it on up. Meet with the arms, framing the ears. Feeling that nice activation that we had in our Tadasana of the, of the legs. Inhale, create length through the side body. Push the pelvis forward, squeezing the glutes. Find a mini back bend. Exhale, come back to your Tadasana on St. Mudra. Inhale through the nose, exhale out through the mouth. Inhale through the nose, exhale out, flutter the lips. One more breath, just like that, to release any tension. Pressing through the feet, inhale, grow tall through the torso. Exhale, sit down and back for our chair pose, Utkatasana. Every inhale, get a little taller. Every exhale, sit a little bit deeper. Pressing into the feet, squeezing those glutes, pressing the palms into each other. One more breath, sit a little lower. Exhale, forward fold, straighten the legs and pedal them out, bending right and left knee. Don't lock the knees out so we're not sitting in our joints to create any wear and tear and potential energy, uh, injury. Inhale up halfway to your flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Slowly step the right foot back, then the left or opposite, and we'll hold our plank to activate our core for 10, nine. The feet should be about hips width distance apart, hips in line with shoulders, pressing the floor away, four, three, Two, one, go through your chaturanga or drop your knees, your chin, chest, and push it through. Low cobra or high cobra, whatever is available for you today. Push it back to your wide leg, child's pose, knees to get open, toes together. Being really active in this balasana child's pose, let every exhale encourage actively those hips closer and closer to those heels feel almost as if you're pushing into your palms to push your hips back but at the same time reaching forward with those fingertips keeping the shoulders plugged in to the pockets Slowly begin to walk the palms back toward the knees. Come to sit up on your heels. Close the knees. From here, you may need to sh uh, shimmy up to the middle of your mat so you can have some space back there. From here, we're in our hero's pose. Plant the palms down to on either side of your thighs and slowly begin to walk them back. As we get a nice front body stretch, the whole entire palm should be on the mat. And once you feel like, okay, maybe I can go a little deeper, slowly glide the elbows down to the mat. Let the head hang heavy as we open up the throat chakra. If you can't quite come down to your elbows, go as far back as you can on the palms. Keep the elbows nice and soft and then drop the head back. Feel the air as it enters and massages the throat.
If you're on your elbows, slowly begin to come back up onto your palms. Drop the chin to the chest. Walk the palms back to the outside of the hips and drop the forehead to the mat, bringing the backs of the palms onto the floor. Shoulders cascade around the knees for our rabbit pose. Keeping the forehead into the mat, rock the head to the left and to the right. Waking up that third eye. Find stillness and slowly begin to lift the tailbone away from the heels. For a deeper expression of our rabbit, you may find that you are, to create the space, you have to rock onto the crown of your head a bit and that is okay. Really let the shoulders be heavy here in the rabbit with the hips elevated. And slowly lower the hips back to the knees. Let your next three inhales come in through the nose. Exhales, fog up the mat in front of you. It may look a little dark in here if your eyes are open because your eyes are away from the light. Imagine you are a seed being planted deep within the soil. You're being watered and nurtured and nourished. And even though it's dark, this is a cocoon. Dark doesn't always mean bad. We are grounded, we are planted. So the darkness is coming from this space of nourishing, this space that we must be in so that we can fully bloom into our greatest potential, to our most beautiful state. Two more breaths here in our soil, in our seed form. Bring your navel to your spine, encouraging your hips down to your heels. Slowly roll it on up as you begin to bloom. Plant the palms in front of your knees. Come through tabletop. Tuck the toes. Shoot the hips up and back for downward dog. And heels encouraged down to the mat. The legs are nice and straight. We'll find a nice still downward dog for two full breaths. Really encourage that tailbone up to the sky here. Ah. Inhale that right leg up and back, keeping the hips squared off to the mat. Bringing that knee into the nose, placing the foot between the palms. Go ahead and pivot down on the back heel of that left foot so that the foot is kind of at a 45 degree angle. Shooting into that right heel or that right knee rather for a 90 degree bend, we'll inhale it up to our warrior one. Both hip bones are pointing toward the short edge of the mat. So unlike warrior two, where it's a hip opener, our hips are narrow here in our warrior one. Arms frame the ears or they're down on a cactus or they're together in Anjali Mudra. If you need to make your warrior one a little wider, that's okay. Typically I do. Because if you're anything like me, you might have had knee surgery. So I do have to make my warrior one a little wider. So if you do need to make your warrior one a little wider, that's totally fine. Everybody's body is different and all poses aren't going to look the same on everybody's body. So do what you need to do to make it accessible. Three full breaths here, really anchoring down to the pinky toe side of that back foot, keeping it nice and strong and active. Closing the eyes here if you can. On your next breath, you're going to pivot up on the ball of that back foot to our high lunge. Pressing into that right heel, we're going to step the left foot up. Inhale the arms to frame the ears. Squeeze the glutes, find the mini back bend. Exhale, full forward. Inhale up, halfway flat back. Exhale, full forward. Plant the palms, step it on back. Go through your flow. You can drop the knees or take a full chaturanga. We're gonna meet in downward dog. 
taking it on the left side. Inhale that left leg up and back. Find your warrior one. You may notice that it's different on one side <laughs> and that is only natural. One more full breath in our warrior one. Rear Bajrasana one, dropping those shoulders. Inhale up on the ball of that back foot, high lunge, crescent lunge. Press into that left heel, step it on up. Arms frame the ears, exhale back into your bend. Inhale, Ardu Tanasana. Step it back. We're gonna go through that one more time. We're gonna take it one breath, one motion. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, foot between the palms, heel down. Inhale up, warrior one. High lunge. Step it up. Back bend. Fall forward. Inhale up. Flat back. Step it back. Go through your flow. Take it on the other side once we get to downward dog. Warrior one, high lunge, step it up, back bend. Ardha Uttanasana. We'll meet in wide like child's pose. We're getting the blood flowing, the blood pumping, the heart going as we continue to build our flow. Remember that you are made for this, you are built for this, and how you show up on the mat is how you show up off the mat. Remember your intention, stay connected to your breath, and take a look at your drissi whenever you need to. Inhale through the, no through the nose, exhale out, flutter the lips. Plant the palms, pull it up. Downward dog. Inhale, right leg up and back. Let's find our warrior one. High lunge. Step it forward, arms frame the ears, find your mini back bend. Bring the palms together, exhale them down to the heart space. Separate the feet about hips width distance apart. Just press the weight into the feet evenly. Shift the weight over to the left foot. We'll start on this side. The left foot. And cup the right sole onto the left ankle. From here, slowly guide that foot up to the left calf. And I'm going to actually turn this way so you guys can see if you need to. As we prepare for our Varasana tree pose, we'll slide that foot right up under the knee. So we never want to place any undue pressure or weight on the knee because we don't want to sit in our joints. So from here, really activate the glutes, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze in them. That'll allow the, the control of the hips for us to open this knee a little bit more to the right. If this is where your tree is planted today, then that's where your tree is planted today. Find your dristi, continue to breathe, press down through the standing leg, use your breath in your dristi and your intention to find pure concentration and focus so that you're able to keep your balance. Use your strength, your physical strength, your emotional strength, and your spiritual strength. You want to get a little bit deeper into your tree, then you can even grab the foot. You don't, it's not like this isn't a pop quiz. <laughs> you can grab the foot, place it into the thigh and I'm shaky a little bit, and press that foot into the thigh, but press the thigh into the foot. So there's this duality. Pressing the palms together, look at your dristi, squeeze those glutes to really open up that knee. If you fall out, hop right on back in. Listen to the sound of my voice, but while you're in your tree, try not to look at the camera or the screen rather, because um, it'll throw off your balance or it could throw off your balance. We'll have about but we'll, I'll give you some breaths to kind of just play with this, see what works, see what doesn't, take your time.
really spread those toes wide. And notice how continuing to breathe and squeezing those glutes forward and really pressing the thigh and the sole into one another will help you with the balance. Really ground down through those shoulders because that standing leg is what's given us that foundation along with the breath, right? So this is our root. N nurture it. The breath is water. It's plant food. Continue. Take about two or three full breaths to explore that and then We'll take it on the other side. The palms can remain together in Anjali Mudra, or you can let your leaves fly into the sky. Slowly release the arms, release the feet. <sighs> Shake it out, inhale through the nose, exhale, flutter the lips. Shake the shoulders out, bend the knees. Wag the tail. Inhale the arms out to the side, up overhead. Exhale, swan back forward. Inhale, halfway up, flat back, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, full forward fold, plant the palms, step or hop your feet back. Go through your flow. We'll meet in downward dog, pedal it out. Just checking on you guys here in the chat. Inhale, the left leg up and back. We'll find our Bear Badrasana one. High lunge. Step it up. Mini back bend. Exhale, the palms down to the heart center. Shift the weight over to the right. Bring the left sole into the right calf or up into that thigh. Find your drifty and you know what to do. Woo. For additional challenge, if you really want to push yourself, um, try closing your eyes as you do this. If you fall out, hop right back in. Gentle reminder that although balance is important, Sometimes we will fall. Sometimes the, the pose isn't going to look like we thought. Sometimes we have to release those expectations, right? When you garden, all your crops don't always look how you thought they were going to look. That doesn't mean that the quality isn't the same. That doesn't mean that they don't taste as good. Um, that doesn't mean that this rose is now not a rose. It just looks differently than you thought. Release expectations and really give yourself a few breaths to just play. Always option, Anjali Mudra, or arms, framing the ears, letting your leaves fly. One more full breath, do what you need to do, push yourself, and we'll meet. Truly shaking the body out. Shake the arms out, wiggle the fingers, shake the legs. Inhale the arms up to the sky, exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale up halfway, flat back. Exhale, forward fold, plant the palms, step the feet back into our plank. We're going to step the right foot out and back in. Left and in. Keep it going. Try not to move the hips. Nothing moves but the legs. Really squeeze those glutes. Keep it going. For 10, 9, 8, 7. Step in as wide as you possibly can to really activate those glutes. Four. Three, two, one. Slowly lower the knees. Knees can come together. Push the heels back. Drop the forehead down to the mat. Child's pose. Release the elbows and the forearms down to the mat. Bring them overhead. Clasp the fingertips right over your head, in the back of your head and your neck. <sighs> adding sound to the breath, the vibration of the voice loosens up any tension or stress, kind of shakes it up, vibrates it so that it can separate and be released.
slowly separate the fingertips, bring them back down to the earth. Walk your palms to your knees, heels or hips sit on the heels. Inhale the arms to frame the ears. Exhale, twist to the right, left palm on the outside of the right thigh, right palm behind the toes, glancing over the right shoulder. Let the eyes track far over the right shoulder where the eyes go, the mind goes, where the mind goes, the body goes. Stay tall through the spine. Get a little bit of deeper, deeper twist by pressing the left hand into the right thigh and exhaling. Close the eyes if you want. Let that twist more so come from this lumbar spine than the neck. We can, we can twist from the neck a little bit to get that stretch, but that's not where we want the impetus of the stretch, to, uh, the twist to come from. Inhale the arms to frame the ears. Exhale over to the opposite side. Inhale back through center. Swing the feet to the left or to the right. Extend the legs out and slowly lower the back of the head onto the mat. Open the legs up so they're at the edges of the mat. And go ahead and drop the big toe side of the feet in toward the midline of the mat. Now, if your feet don't turn in, that's okay. Just the effort is sufficient. Two full breaths here. and slowly glide the heels in and let the feet fall outward. You'll feel actually kind of just press the feet outward onto the pinky toe sides of the feet. You'll feel this all on the outside of your thighs into your glute, into that lower back, you'll feel it. Just turn them in and out. You'll notice that it turns the glutes on. It kind of feels like ballet if you've ever done ballet and you're in like second position and doing tendus, that's kind of what that activation feels like. And then just kind of just beat the mat with your legs. Inhale, exhale through the mouth. Finding stillness, just letting the arms hang out. As we prepare for our Shavasana, closing the eyes, begin to listen to the beating of the heart and the sound of the breath. Remembering that every breath is a new opportunity for you to create newness, new opportunity, new space, new life. Knowing that every single time we breathe, we are reminded that we are alive, we are well, and we are present. Feel the weight of your body into the mat, judgment-free, expectation-free, remembering that we are always supported, whether we recognize it or acknowledge or not, the earth is always here to carry us Remembering that at any point we can sink deeply and come to the base of our spine and find that red glowing ball of energy, that root chakra energy to remind us how important our matter is, our physical body, our presence and existence in physical form on this earth. Our feet are our roots. All our nutrients and our minerals and everything that makes us these healthy, living, breathing organisms are deep, deep inside of us. And every time we breathe, we water our flower. Every time we breathe, we nurture our flower. As we journey through life, both here on the mat and off the mat, find new ways to nourish your flower, nourish your soil, 
sometimes it may get dark, but that darkness does not always have to be a negative thing. Sometimes that darkness is you returning into your soil for further and deeper nourishing to emerge from the depths of the soil as a new beautiful plant, a new beautiful flower. Continue to listen to the sound of your breath in and out, out and in. This is a time for you to simply just be. Slowly begin to bring the awareness back into the body, rolling over to whichever side feels most gentle and kind for you today. Hug the knees into the chest, drop the chin, and give yourself a nice big hub, wrapping the arms around the shin. Thanking your body for getting you through practice. Thanking your body for being present with you through your cocoon stage through the stage where you were being planted, through the stage where things looked a little bit darker than you may have expected. Take a nice deep breath in, filled with love, acceptance, and peace, and exhale anything that is not aligned with those things. Release the palms, press into the floor, come to sit up in your Sukhasana. Whichever leg is normally on the top, go ahead and put it on the bottom. Meet me in your Sukhasana, tailbone grounded, spine nice and tall, palms down on the, uh, the knees. We'll take three full breaths together to seal our practice. Remember your intention. Close the eyes. Inhale through the nose. Exhale. Exhale can come through the nose or through the mouth, thanking you for showing up today on the mat, not for me, but for you, because how we show up on the mat is how we show up off the mat. And every single time we are on the mat, we are a little bit better. And when we are a little bit better, the world is a little bit better. The light in me sees the light in you. Namaste. I will see you guys on the second week in April because it will be uh, Easter break. So we won't have class on Friday uh, and we won't have class on Monday. So take care, be well, uh, continue to breathe, <laughs> and I'll see you guys next time.